<sighs> What's up guys? So today I'm going to be uh, talking about anxiety, but more specifically, what the hell it's like um, having it and uh, kind of just like the symptoms of it. Um, I feel like I should probably mention that I'm not a doctor or a therapist or licensed in any way. I'm just a dude who has dealt with anxiety for most of my life and learned quite a bit about it over the years. And uh, thought, so I thought I'd share with you some of the ways that I cope with uh, the anxiety as well as uh, doing a nice little painting while uh, I do it. Have a nice visual while uh, I uh, talk to you guys. Thought it'd be a little different. But, um, yeah, so, if you listen to my mental health journey, part two and three, you should have an idea of, of what I go through with anxiety. Um, I have cardiophobia, which, uh, which is basically health anxiety regarding my heart, so I'm afraid of having a heart attack, and a lot of that is because the sensations of a panic attack is very similar to a heart attack and uh i could just kind of roughly go over my experience with uh what a panic attack is like you uh get kind of dissociated so it, it's kind of uh kind of blank out a little bit and uh, your heart starts to race and thump in your chest really hard. That, that's, that was the biggest trigger for me. Uh, which is what made me think it was a heart attack when I had it. Uh, and it also beats off of rhythm. Like it, uh, you get like palpitations. So it's not only beating really fast, but it, it beats um, sometimes irregularly. Um... You have heavy breathing. Can't remember if I already said that or not. If I did, I apologize. Uh, it's difficult to keep your breath. Um, you get dizzy and wobbly legs. Um, you feel like you're gonna faint. You get nauseous. Uh, it feels like someone's squeezing your throat. Uh, my spine will feel like it's on fire. Um, a lot of pressure in the chest. It's, it's a very sick, uh, scary feeling. And, uh, and it took me years. I've been dealing with this for about four years now to, to accept that it's anxiety. Because what happens is every time I have a panic attack, it's so distressful that you automatically assume the worst. And, and your your brain kind of goes to, what if this is a heart attack? Or something actually wrong with me, even though I've been checked out several times for it. Um, and got it all ruled out that there is no actual heart issue. Um, but it's that, that what if, that really, you know, what if it's this time? That makes it difficult. Um... And I lost my train of thought. So, anyways, the sensations that I'm feeling, what, what's going on in my body and why I have anxiety, like what it is exactly, is that my body is going into the fight or flight response, which is your body's way of, of warning you that you're in danger. So let's say that you're walking in the woods, right? You're going for a hike, and you come across a grizzly bear. What will happen is your brain and your eyes, your your eyes, and will will tell the brain that there's a grizzly bear in front of you, and then your brain will release um, adrenaline to either 
to tell the body to either fight, flee, or uh, freeze. Call it the fight or flight response. And w when it's in that situation, the body goes through a, uh, a risk assessment, which is it, it, it kind of determines what action it should take and how dangerous the situation is. And, uh, and then it takes an action to either fight or flee. And it's the uh, amygdala in your brain that determines that that is basically the body's alarm system. <clears throat> Sorry, clear my throat. And that's what releases the adrenaline. It tells your body that there's a danger and that you need to escape. Well, with someone with anxiety, the basically the amygdala will uh, release adrenaline when there isn't any actual danger. And so our body goes into the fight or flight when we're just, you know, sitting down watching television, you know. And, uh, and that's what gives us that, that scary sensation of the heartbeat and stuff. It's because what happens is the body thinks that there's danger and it doesn't see actual any danger. And so it goes through all these risk assessments. And that's where those what if questions come from. Because since there is no actual like danger, um, it starts to create scenarios in its head because the brain's trying to scan for where the danger is at when there isn't any. And for me, and even people with like OCD, um, what happens is the, uh, you go through a traumatic event. Like for me, for example, it was that first panic attack that triggered the cardiophobia because I was completely sure that my anxiety or uh, yeah, my panic attack was a heart attack the time and so I had convinced myself so to speak or my subconscious that I was dying and so it became like a traumatic event and so now the brain associates that feeling that I had with a heart attack with a sense of danger and so now my brain is constantly scanning my body for symptoms that that seems dangerous uh you know like if i'm jogging or something get a high heart rate because my brain associates now with a high heart rate to a heart attack whenever i have a high heart rate i'll have a panic attack and it, it, that's kind of like what happens with anxiety is that it makes these associations and it, it, it does that because it tries to keep the body safe. We could go back to the, the woods hiking example. You encounter a bear. Once you have that encounter where you feel as though you're in danger, um, your brain might not want to go hiking anymore. You know, your, your brain will have a fear response when you're in the woods now because of that tra traumatic event. Because the brain is constantly learning things and finds patterns and uh, does its best to keep you safe and out of danger. So now when you go in the woods, the brain's like, whoa, wait a minute. Last time you were here, um, you know, you encountered a bear. So, you might have a, a fear response to, to the woods or hiking now. Anxiety is the same exact way. I sure hope you're... I'm catching... Okay, good. Um, it works the same way. You have some type of experience. And... 
like for me it was the the panic attacks and it uh it triggers a uh basically like a defense mechanism in your brain to keep you safe to keep you away from those things that the brain thinks is dangerous and so what happens is for me, I end up avoiding things that raise my heart rate, for example, because my brain thinks that, that that's dangerous. And so what happens is you end up avoiding it. And then uh, it just kind of grows from there. Because once you give your anxious mind a little leeway it continues to take more. What I mean is at first you might be afraid of working out because it raises your heart rate. Then the next thing you know, you're too afraid to take hot showers because that raises your heart rate too. And then you're afraid of different sensations that your body has. Like you'll read on, the worst thing you could do is Google too, by the way, if you have health anxiety. Um, but I learned that, uh, your left arm goes numb when you're having a heart attack, supposedly. Uh, and so now every time I feel even a remotely small sensation in my left arm, I'm like, oh my God, you see how the anxiety builds on itself. And the next thing you know, you're, <laughs> you, you're basically a slave to your own anxiety. And from what I've been able to learn, and I could talk quite a bit about this, it's, it's a lot to talk about. Um, but from what I learned, the best way to, to handle it, which is also the hardest thing to do, is to basically face your fears. And I know that's a real cliche thing, you know, you, you see that kind of stuff on like Facebook motivational speeches and shit. But um, what I mean is, like what happens is that your brain associates certain things with danger. And with people with anxiety, it's associating things with danger that isn't actually dangerous. So you're having a fear response when there actually isn't any real danger. But to you, it feels very real because... The same response you would have if you were actually to run into a bear or something is the exact same response that people with anxiety feel. It's as if they are actually encountering a bear as far as mentally and like emotionally and what they're going through uh, physiologically. There's actually no difference, uh, even though the fear is different. Um, the actual response that your body is going through is pretty much the same thing um and so what happens is with the risk assessment when your body is going through the risk assessment mode when you're in high panic it's telling you to avoid that thing that scares you and by basically not doing that it it shows your brain over time, that there actually isn't anything to be afraid of. And it basically rewires your brain to no longer associate danger with that thing, that whatever it is that causes your anxiety. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense. Kind of like with the uh, bear hiking, going back to that. You know, you had a, a really scary experience, you saw a bear, and now you're afraid to go hiking. Because, you know, last time I did that, there was a bear in the woods. So now whenever I go into the woods, I'm terrified. And, you know, because the brain associated the woods with a grizzly bear, because it's trying to keep you safe. But let's say that this person enjoys hiking, you know, and that person's sad because... I want to go hiking still, and I know it's irrational because, yeah, there are bears out there, but it's a real rare occurrence, and it's unfortunate that that happened. 
So the only way to get over that anxiety is to go in the woods. And then once you go in the woods and you don't encounter a bear, the brain is kind of basically going like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's going to be a bear, there's going to be a bear, and then there isn't one. And then it's like, oh, okay. And then you just keep doing that, and eventually the brain will no longer associate the danger of a bear with the woods. And that's kind of what you have to do with anxiety, which is why it's so goddamn hard to do, because it literally is exhausting. Because... The anxiety attacks are so debilitating and it, it takes a lot of strength and courage to do that willingly putting yourself in a position that's terrifies you every day purposely until your brain like readjusts itself you know um it's really hard to do and uh but it is, from what I hear, the most effective method um, you could do for anxiety. Because there's certain behaviors that you could develop. Let's take OCD, for example. Because I feel like I have that, too, or I used to. I actually got over it. I had Puro, which is essentially um, OCD, but without the compulsions. So it's just the intrusive thoughts. But this is a, another really kind of misunderstood um, mental illness, I feel. Because it's used a, a lot in, like, different um, conversations, you know. Like, it's used to describe someone being real anal about, you know, how neat they are. And you're really clean, like wash your hands a lot and oh my gosh I'm so OCD about this things like that but that's not actually what OCD is that's the the hand washing and the really neatness and stuff that's just the compulsion version of the anxiety you have to actually have severe anxiety if that thing isn't clean and it actually stems from irrational thoughts so it's it's actually an anxiety disorder, not not just being neat. Um, what it is is they'll have an irrational thought that is intrusive, which means it constantly is is um, running through your brain, your subconscious. You can't really seem to stop it. And the reason why that is is because you have. A random thought in your head that's disturbing and because it's disturbing you try not to think about it and if you try not to think about it you're actually thinking about it it's kind of like the example of um, telling someone whatever you do don't think about a polar bear next thing you know you're thinking about a polar bear because even if you're trying not to think of something you're technically thinking about it. And that's what happens with the intrusive thoughts with people with OCD. Now, a lot of people have intrusive thoughts. Actually, most people do. But um, they're able to just say, oh, that's ridiculous, and kind of move on with their day. But with people with OCD, their rational thoughts um, cause a, a tremendous amount of anxiety because they're so distressful to them. And it keeps replaying in their mind. Um, so, for example, a common one, but everyone experiences it differently, is that uh, the fear of, of getting sick, like with germs and stuff. They'll have thoughts and even visual images of them dying of some sickness. And it's so intrusive that every minute of their waking lives, it's running through their brain, causing a tremendous amount of, of anxiety. And so what happens is, your body, or your brain, wants relief, it wants comfort, because of the fight or flight response. 
because what's going on is almost this, pretty much the same thing as your body thinks it's in danger. It's interpreting its thoughts as your, your thoughts as essentially you're in danger. Like uh, it thinks that these risks that are in your head, no matter how improbable, are are actual dangers because of how much you're thinking about it and how much distress it is causing you. And so what happens is they want to get some relief and that's where the compulsion comes in. They'll wash their hands because maybe if I wash my hands, the thoughts will stop slowing down. You know, I'll clean the house, I'll sanitize the house. And um, there's all kinds of examples because everyone deals with OCD differently and can have different thoughts. But I think that all OCD works the same because it's all anxiety driven, even if it is a different thing that you may be dwelling on. And so, lost track of where I was going with this. Let me uh, let me pause it real quick and recollect my thoughts. This cabin's looking pretty nice, though. The problem with compulsive behavior is that even though it might make you feel better about when you wash your hands, when you have OCD germ. Uh, phobia and stuff. The problem with that is that it actually reinforces the fear because it's telling the brain that, oh, see, you're safe now because you washed your hands. And so behaving and engaging in the compulsions ends up actually making it worse. And there's a good story metaphor that I heard that I really... Um, liked because it's it's very true at least for me is that um the story goes there's this man and he's like lives in texas or something right and every every morning or every time he goes outside he waves a stick around uh every time <clears throat> and eventually one guy approaches him and, and asks why do you wave that stick around every time you're outside like why do you do that and the man says, well, it's to keep the elephants away. He fears that uh, elephants will attack him if he uh, doesn't have a stick. Uh, if he doesn't have a stick with him. And it's an irrational fear because one, elephants, you know, aren't in, don't live in Texas. That and I don't think a stick would work. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it would. I don't know. But it's still pretty irrational, even if it was a place with elephants to walk around. You know, you understand what I'm saying. And the stick in this scenario is the compulsion. That's the thing that they believe is keeping them safe. The same way that someone with germ phobia washes their hands to make them feel safe. But it actually reinforces it. Because, just like the elephant man, um, the man then responds and says, you know, well, there are no elephants. You know, has an elephant attacked you? And the guy with the stick responds, no, because I have my stick. And that's kind of how it is with anxiety. Let's take the, uh, the germ, the guy who's afraid of getting, of getting sick. He'll say the same thing about, well, the reason why I haven't been sick is because I've been doing these compulsions, because I've been washing my hands over and over again. But in reality, you know, it's still an irrational, you know, it, it wouldn't make a difference if you, if, you know, um, didn't wash your hands 30, 40, 50 times a day, you know, but they don't know that until they actually... Um, stop doing that. Just like with the elephant, he won't know that his el the elephant fear is irrational and that elephants aren't out to get him until he puts the stick down and sees that there are no elephants. Um, 
so with anxiety, that's kind of what I have to do is I have to essentially face the things, my irrational fears until my brain can associate the fact that there actually is no danger with these sensations that I feel. And it's a pretty pretty crazy circle because uh, I'm afraid of the sensations that I get from my anxiety, which gives, so I have anxiety. That anxiety gives me these scary sensations those scary sensations increase my anxiety, which increases the sensations. So it could very easily snowball into, you know, I could be feeling kind of anxious to a full-blown panic attack very, very quickly. And that's why it's been so hard for me to, to work, because it's just so unpredictable. I could go from feeling okay to a full-blown panic attack sometimes within... 30 seconds and it just comes randomly you know um but uh i'm getting better it's still difficult but um i've learned a lot because that's that's what i that's what helped me the most was uh learning about it something that is just comfortable for me to uh know what, why I feel the way I feel, and also just knowing that I'm not alone. There's others that are going through the same thing. It's just as uh, difficult for them as it is for me, which I wouldn't wish on anybody. But uh, it is, uh, there is some comfort in that. Um, but yeah. This, uh, in case you're wondering, this painting is actually uh, for a friend uh, that I did for years ago, back in, I want to say, like 2011, maybe. And uh, back then, I didn't paint. I actually drew with coloring pencils. And... Uh, I uh, talked to her recently, it's been years, and uh, she showed me the drawing, and I totally forgot about it, but it, uh, it's kind of nostalgic for me when I saw it, and uh, made me want to paint it, again, just to uh, kind of see the comparison between then and now, I thought that would be pretty cool, so uh, that's that's the scene I'm doing. And I'll uh, show the before and after when I'm all done with this. Probably on my TikTok. But uh, I'll probably post it on Facebook as well. Uh, yeah, it's turning out pretty nice. Sorry to shift from the subject. But uh, I think I had uh, said most of the things that I wanted to say. But... Uh, yeah, that's that's the struggle that uh, I'm going through, and uh, I think the next video that I'll do is uh, a video on probably depression, of how the anxiety and the autism that I recently found out that I have uh, kind of played a role in in my depression. So I'll probably do that. And I know these things seem really freaking depressing. But uh, I do it because I want to... I'm con I, I, I want to get better. I'm, I'm on the path of, to heal. I'm, you know, I'm recovering. And I'm taking steps to better my life. And, and then recover from anxiety and depression. And so I just want to show you and be honest with where I'm at right now and what I'm going through while I'm going through this process. Um, just so you guys could see how I'm doing. And also one day, 
look back on where I am today and hopefully I'll be in a much better place today or uh, in the future than I am, you know, right now. And I'll be able to look back on it. And uh, also, maybe it might help other people that might be going through the same thing. Um, so that's that's why I'm doing it. But uh, yeah, I'm putting in a nice little window there. You probably can't tell what it is yet, but it's like a three-sided window. I can't remember what they're called, but they're like the the window panels are like. Uh, kind of sticking out of, from the house. Can't, I can't even hardly explain what I'm talking about, but that's what I'm doing. That's a little too dark. But, uh, let me put in these uh, little win window sills here. There we go. Looking pretty good, I think. I got this white part to put in, but uh, overall, it's I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, might uh, put a little, little light on this tree from the window. That. There's some light from the window here. Just uh, from the uh, windows. Yeah, put a little leaves, more leaves on the ground. Or I should say, leaves that are uh, getting touched by some of the sunlight. Let me tell you, these leaves took forever to do. But, uh, yeah, with no further ado, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. But at the same time, I kind of wanted to show you what I was doing with my painting. In case you guys are interested in that, too. Uh, just kind of putting in some of the lighter areas. It's kind of random because um, the sun's kind of shining through the uh, the trees and stuff. But uh, yeah. Actually, you know what? Just to make the video more interesting, I'm going to make this, this painting pop a little more. I'm going to add a little more highlights on the leaves. Good pop quite a lot. Immediately it's just gonna really catching some of that that light. It's what we want. Yeah it's looking pretty decent. Also want to add a little Little bit of color variation eventually to the leaves. Like eventually, I'll be putting in some. Uh, sure, you can even see what the hell I'm doing. Actually, I'll put in some. A little bit of reds here and there. So. More yellows here. Just making it pop a little more. Because uh got some pretty deep darks, but I uh, want a little more contrast with the lights. And a little more red to the light color. Just add a little bit of variation. 
things like that. Like so. Really hate this camera holder. But, uh, yeah. Gonna also add a little bit of brightness here and there. It might be shining through. Some of the tree line. I always love doing the, uh, the autumn scenes. Ever since I was a kid, before I even started painting in high school and stuff, I would uh, I love to draw out uh, the coloring pencil, all the different autumn scenes and stuff that I could do. And uh, it's just really fun to see <clears throat> the improvements I had over the years with, uh, in particular, autumn scenes. Adding some, yeah, it's looking a lot better. Just adding just that little bit of, a little bit more light and stuff shining through the trees and makes a pretty big difference. I want to be careful of not adding too much because uh, it'll lose some of that, uh, that contrast between the darker colors which is what we definitely want because that's what kind of creates the form and the dimensions of the leaves. But uh, it's, I think it's turned out pretty damn good. But uh, it took way longer than I thought, <laughs> especially with the, uh, the leaves on the ground. That took a while, several layers to do. But, uh, yeah, I, I think I'll cut the video out now. Hopefully this helped some people that might be going through uh, similar experiences. And uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far. And uh, you guys have a good one.